All right, the left YouTube pipeline, the good, the bad, and the hot. Hassan Abi, more like Hassan a billionaire. Second thought, more like second tank. Thoughts on this guy being a tanky? I, I, I hope he fucking drives a tank to your house, okay? Contra points, more like pro status quo points. Who is a dirty limp, godforsaken tanky, or the worst of them all, a dirty shell? These eternal callouts thrown around in the gladiatorial arena, which is online left-wing propaganda, or as us kids call it, left-wing YouTube content, have left so many confused on who the hell they should even listen to. But before we begin answering that question, what even is a left YouTube, bread tube, the swallatariat, or whatever you want to call it? Depending on who you ask, they will give you different definitions. But as an unwilling member of this so-called community, and to avoid infighting before this video even starts, let me give you a definition which we'll use as a baseline for this entire conversation. They're simply a loose cluster of channels advocating progressive ideas based on culture, race, and most importantly, class characterized by infighting and a constant disagreement on what is to be done. Noah Samson had made a fantastic guide to the basics of leftists on YouTube. Go ahead and check out his work, especially if you're still confused about what any of these words coming out of my mouth even mean. Good. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get to what we're actually here for me telling you which channels are good and which you should avoid like the plague because of my very specific niche political disagreements with them. Ah, no, what, what are you telling me? Hundreds of those have already been made? So now I can't just score easy YouTube infighting algorithm points by calling other channels stupid and wrong. Well, shit, I, I really want to do a video on this eclectic group of annoying and petty, but also funny, passionate, creative and smart creators who are in it for a better world for themselves and most commonly for both. So instead of looking at them individually, let's look at this left tube pipeline in general by exploring how it works, if it works, is it cringe, is it not, and most importantly, what can be done to maybe, I don't know, improve it. A funnel or a pipeline as it's more commonly known in this context is not much more than marketing terminology. When you want to sell a product or a service to people who don't know anything about your business, you need to put them through a few steps before they're ready to buy. All these steps combined are simply called a funnel. At first, you need to inform them about the existence of your product, then tell them how it can solve some of their problems, give them some data on how it helped others in the past, some stats about how it works, and finally, a deal you're willing to propose. Political funnels work in a very similar manner, albeit a bit more complicated, because you see, these different steps in a business funnel are managed by a tight group of professionals, while political ones are managed by a wide range of disconnected individuals and organizations from all over the world. Instead of selling a product, they're pitching an idea. Instead of leading you to a sale, they're leading you to, in this case of the left, uh, an elevated class-conscious perception of the world, while hopefully entertaining you in the process. Now, while this funnel is much bigger than a bunch of people on YouTube or Twitch, it would be foolish to ignore Typical a little fucking marketing guy, bro. Look at this. Three minutes. Three minutes and 58 seconds of just marketing jargon. A thing called the, the internet. Hence why we'll concentrate on just that. Specifically, the big red button website, YouTube. The current lack of organization and structure among these free-floating radicals simply leads all of them to naturally kind of fall into different parts of the funnel. Some contribute to people going down the pipeline, while others, uh, well, not so much. And this is exactly what I would like to explore with you today, building a grander schematic while using examples of what this funnel looks like now, how different creators yeah, marketing, calling everything else marketing is paid marketing. Impacted, I mean, this but is also marketing. more importantly, how with a simple shift, we could be far more productive while also doing what we love, making a living off of internet 
Shitposting. First, I had to define the goal of this left-wing funnel. For right-wing funnels, it would be making people blame all their ills on everything except the capitalist system, be that minority groups, gay frogs, vaccines, or lizards. An example of such a right-wing funnel would be, you know, hooking them with uh, messed up transphobic propaganda. Then you spoon feed them a bit of xenophobia and you top that off with some heavier conspiracies once they're deep enough in the rabbit hole and you've done it. Perfect drones. For the left, the end point of any online funnel, when you bring it back to the basics, would be getting people to actually apply their beliefs in the real world. Do shit, organize, unionize, protest, and yes. other things I cannot say if I want to keep this. But also, he's saying like other things I can't say, but also like for the right wing, it's also stochastic terrorism for the most part. I know that a lot of people try to say this about left-wing content as well to like say that it is it's actually like terror inspiring or it's actually terrorism or whatever. But the real reason why you don't see a lot of like left-wing terror, quote unquote, is because one, the left is powerless, and two, um, it doesn't work that way. The reason why fascism bre breeds a shit ton of stochastic terror is because the unjustifiable systems that we exist under are already very violent. They're already very violent, and these people that are on the right-wing uh, pipeline, if you will, are oftentimes pushing for more of the very same violences that you experience if you're a marginalized person, if you're black or queer or, or uh, disabled, you know? Like, most of the time, most of the time, right-wing commentators are demanding more of this violence. They're justifying the violence that you're experiencing and saying it's actually good and very chill that it's happening while also simultaneously asking for more of it so a lot of people tend to feel like they can take matters in their own hands like that one lawyer guy who went up and shot a fucking shot two indigenous protesters in panama the the lawyer uh the american lawyer you know glorifying kyle rittenhouse is another good example of this like it's the it's the idea that like you can just go and and take matters in your own hands and, and uh, do more of the things that are already happening. I guess, like, uh, if we did exist under a uh, socialist structure, maybe they could be, like, a reinforcement of, like, the type of state violence that ex that exists, uh, where you would have, like, I, I don't know what the brown shirt's equivalent of that would be. It could happen. It's just that we do not live under that structure currently, even though many people claim that we do or fear that we might one day. We do not. <sighs> Anyway, this this when will never be clipped, but you just spitted truth. Thank you. Video up on YouTube. So, okay, I think this is a wide enough, fair goal, which doesn't get too entangled with whatever Marxism, Leninism, anarcho-feminist, judo-bolshevik, democratic POC, cracker liberal communist school of thought you all belong to. The funnel should build socialists and anarchists who act on their ideas, because without that, this whole thing is just a circle jerk. So... This is what I came up with. Um, yeah, not the prettiest thing, but let me walk you through it. Each layer has multiple types of creators. These types are pretty simplistic, and most of these people fit multiple categories and even funnels. But I had to stop somewhere in the name of your and my own ever what deteriorating attention spam. Many of the people on this list will likely not identify with the position I'm giving them, either because of humility by saying shit like, well, we just make entertainment, or that they're small-headed dum-dums that uh, you shouldn't listen to while managing to deliver brilliant insight time and time again. And the most important category of people on this list who will not like being identified with their label are, well, uh, I, I call them tumors, my man. And funny enough, this is the only category that permeates all the layers of the funnel. Well, you know what else permeates my existence as a proud second holder? No access to most of the good shows and movies I want to consume oh, with my fuck? every fiber only because some corporate executive well, decided they should be available tumor? in my region three months after release. This is where Atlas VPN comes into play. Just one click and the likes of Netflix or Apple TV what start to be some Californian stuck in traffic or a Brit enjoying a succulent Chinese meal and voila, I get to watch whatever I want. But the power of Atlas VPN doesn't stop there. It can help you truly keep your Google searches in private. It stops malicious links and annoying ads and tells I you when being, someone is trying I to steal being your being data. A one package fits all which is now available dude. as the most affordable online protection for just $1.70 per month plus six months extra with a 30 days money back guarantee. It costs less than a can of beer and it would not only get you great and practical protection, but it will also help our channel grow and my mortgage decline. Now go ahead and enjoy the Black Friday price cut as Atlas VPN Premium at the $1.70 price point 
per month plus six months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your privacy. This is an ethical react. That's why we have the price. Many cut benefits of Atlas VPN for the and his ad cuts. read. You We're doing the ad read. The ethical, the uh, ethical below. react. Be quick, as this is a time limited offer. You see, everyone's journey down the funnel, while well, generally within certain parameters, can go very differently. For some, it takes decades, while others get a matching Mao and Lenin tattoo 10 minutes after they date their first communist. Hell, some never even make it down the funnel and remain liberals at best or whatever ideology your uncle has at worst. Why this happens, both through the online and other political or sales funnels, is incalculably wide and diverse. We all come from different worlds, different realities, ideologies, call them whatever you want. And it's obvious that one method cannot work for everyone, no matter how much you've been taught to hate or love your boss in the first place. So then, in the funnel, who exactly are the so-called tumors? I didn't name them that out of spite, but because they simply do operate like tumors, swelling, growing, swelling, and growing, no other reason to exist. The tumors refuse to participate in said funnel, and instead they become channels, writers, content creators, and so on, whose entire purpose is mostly growing their own image, brand, and audience. Well, there's nothing wrong in trying to grow your shit, the only reason you end up in this category is if you grow it at the expense of the funnel. You see, the problem with pushing people down the funnel for them is that their content stops being engaging for people who've actually moved further down, who managed to, for the lack of a better word, outgrow them. People move Moving down the funnel means less views, listens, or streams. Less views, listens, or streams means less money, popularity, and relevancy. So sometimes, subconsciously, and other times with very real strategy and intent in mind, tumors shit talk and smear other creators from the funnels below them. They often camouflage that as being principled, fighting against problematic schools of thought or my favorite, purity checking. No, he's not talking about me at all. I literally purposely don't do that. And I don't even do that for literally you you think i do that you will almost never hear me talk about a content creator in a negative capacity if they are like anywhere near this universe ones that even deserve criticism i usually stray away from partially because but you did do that a few times fuck no i very purposely avoid if I don't like a content creator, or if I don't like what they're doing, I will usually refuse to recognize or talk about them at all. And you will almost always exclusively hear about content creators that I do watch, that I do like, that I appreciate the work of. That's what I do on, on uh, purpose. I don't even think he's talking about me as a tumor. Anyway, I'm sure he'll be... He'll explain it in a second. Instead, most of the time, it's simple drama and content baiting. Yeah, I don't do this. The only people that I farm are like those who are very clearly my ideological opponents. Okay, during the Jubilee vid, Destiny was in. You barely even talked about him until he was being a fucking libtard dumbass. Yeah, I don't, I have no, I have no interest. Well, that's a different reason, but I'll, I'll say it like this. I farm content, of course, of course I do. The people that I farm content of is the likes of Ben Shapiro and others who I'm ideologically against. Andrew Tate, who I'm ideologically against. Like the people that I uh, the people that I use for our algorithmic boost oftentimes are I on the exact opposite side of the ideological ideological spectrum. Okay. If there's someone who's on the exact opposite uh, side of the ideological spectrum and I don't talk about them, that's probably because it's not worth talking about because I don't want to give them clout. If there are people who I'm ostensibly on the right side or ostensibly close to on the ideological spectrum and I don't talk about them at all, it's probably because they're in their own little circle. They're doing their own thing. I don't want to... I don't want to... to like, I don't feel like it's so offensive and so bad that I should make content out of it because I think that that's a mere distraction. It's the reason why I try to not farm drama, unless it's literally drama related to, like, the Joe Rogans and the Ben Shapiros of the world, right? 
These are mostly debate bro channels and streamers, often liberal elements LARPing class consciousness in the beginning, but as time goes by, show no real signs of any even slightly radical political thought. The both siders, the lib apologists, the okay. ones who spend five hours shit talking past socialist experiments and then tell you to vote because Biden is the best we've got. The constant conflict prone behavior and totally. Okay, well, the AOC thing is a little. It feels like he's talking about me a little bit. There. Embarrassing lack of self awareness. But also, on the other spectrum, there are the elitist theory academics and campus who completely miss that little point of philosophers changing the world, not just being the most right. And while disagreements are bound to happen wherever there are two dudes and a cup half full, it's only when friendly fire becomes pretty much your most successful method of growing your online presence that you become the tumor. It doesn't matter if they see themselves as such or if you like. Yes, um, anyone that is constantly left punching and constantly fucking talking about like uh, the real cancer, the real scary problem is, ooh, people that are further to the left than me is someone who is like very deliberately and very specifically trying to shut uh, you off from from going on your own journey into theory. They're they're oftentimes also utilizing they're oftentimes also utilizing uh, uh, you know liberal ideology that is very pervasive in an effort to like make a brand for themselves. Now the reason why the reason why I say this is because what fucking power do these supposed tankies have? I make fun of Marxist Leninists and I make fun of anarchists quite frequently on this broadcast, but they're usually in jest and they come from a place of understanding their position. Okay? I do it because I want to create a large umbrella that even includes liberals, of course. Okay? That's why I always tell people from varying different ideological backgrounds in my community to be fucking chill and be normal. Now, the reason why. The reason why I don't spend any fucking time with like people who I'm in ideological disagreements with for the most part and only spend time talking about fucking reactionary right-wing fascist ideals is because we live in a reactionary culture. We live in a reactionary country, okay? It's fucking ridiculous to constantly posture as though you are the sane, the one sane leftist. I'm the one sane uh, social Democrat, actually, and everyone to my left is actually fucking crazy when I recognize that those people are important, okay? Those people also still pull many others further down the anti-capitalist pipeline, okay? They also have a tendency to make people like myself look more sane in comparison. I do not care. It's ultimately unproductive. And more importantly than that, it comes from a place of like, just hitting someone who has no power whatsoever, okay? It's so weird to be a guy who's like, I'm anti-capitalist or I adorn uh, leftist politics or radical politics. Like, that's my, that's my entire brand who then spends all of their fucking time literally punching those who are, I guess, like, marginally more left than they are on one particular issue. I know that... A lot of people will look at something like this and go, well, actually, the reason why people are engaging this kind of purity cycle is actually because those guys have damaging ideas. You want to clean your ranks of those people that have, like, really bad ideas. But in, but in fact, oftentimes it stems from miscommunication, a misunderstanding, constantly assuming that the other person has, like, additional scary thoughts that you're trying to draw out of their commentary regularly. Like, I can fucking condemn Hamas one million gorillion times and motherfuckers will still go technically he loves Hamas actually and I know it I know he does he's just too much of a pussy to say it but I'm gonna use every fucking waking moment to try to find clips that like at least teeter on the edge of him like saying that well no those guys are operating on on uh not just simply barbaric uh rapist uh, mindset or anti-semitism mindset there they they do have like a goal ultimately right you might not agree with it i certainly do not agree with their methods right but ultimately you still have to do decent analysis that doesn't mean that i'm fucking pro hamas but of course you can cut as much hassan as pro hamas videos as you can there's a lot of islamophobia happening you know we're, we're back to the post 9 11 universe so Literally, Western chauvinism, they fucking say NATO is not imperialist, man. Come on, lol. They say every non-Western socialist country ever was actually fascist and worse than Nazi Germany. It's pretty obvious what they're doing. Exactly. Uh, a lot of that is also ahistorical, but it's fine. 
Let's continue. Like them or hate their guts. Hell, I'm even going to go so far as not to ascribe them as necessarily bad or intentionally malignant. Probably half of them are doing what in their ideological sense seems right. But when it comes to what we're talking about here, the online left-wing political funnel, they are unfortunately not one of those harmless tumors. They keep people from advancing ideologically. They provide fuel for even greater than usual infighting. They dilute the movement and most importantly, they dilute ideological growth into a simple childish game of I'm right, no, I'm right, no, I'm right. Criticism should of course be shared amongst people on the same team, but in one-to-one -one conversations, not through loudspeakers. It's just impractical unless all you want to do is grow your YouTube presence. We don't all have to agree and realistically can only guess what school of thought might end up being the one who's right in the end. That's if we don't all die by then. And it's exactly in accepting this modesty of uncertainty that we should treat others in the funnel with all due respect. Who in the fuck says we are the ones who got it all figured out? All you can do is push your ideas and let others push theirs in this wide, beautiful, ideological family of ours. Don't op so for what he's saying is I, I completely agree with. And also what he's saying is uh, I feel like Assange's biggest merit is that the, for the most part, he can stay away from injecting, interjecting in content creator drama because he tends to be about that shit is indescribable to normal people. Why are we watching this video again? I don't know, cause I I uh, like uh, I like you got me's channel. I wanted to see what he had to say, but ultimately, listen, 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 listen. I don't know what the fucking truth is. I don't know what the best uh, way forward is. So I do agree that like there are always going to be differences in opinion. I just think that anyone who pushes this country and anyone who pushes the country. Anyone who pushes this country or any Western country in an anti-imperialist direction, in a direction where people can have more social amenities and things like that, uh, is is good. Good, ultimately. You're, you're pushing the country in the right direction. You're pulling the country in the right direction. However, even with all of these people combined, we are, of course, still powerless in the face of these institutions that are backed by capitalists. These institutions that are established and and created in an effort to justify the oppressive structures that we exist under uh in an effort to make it seem like any other alternative means is actually unimaginable and, and really sad and really scary as a matter of fact much worse than the the homelessness that you see on the streets or the fact that we still have medical debt in this country right like that's not a real thing anywhere else but we still have it even though we're the wealthiest nation on earth so that's the way that's the way i think about it that's why i don't fucking spend time left punching because it's so stupid it's like dumb as fuck the left has no power the left has no power in this country that's the reason why i also don't yell at fucking uh, uh alexandra ocasio-cortez I have disagreements with her and i will openly state my disagreements with her from time to time but ultimately it's just like it's ridiculous to to fucking try to glom on to uh, the one person or the the five or six people in Congress that is like closest to the way I view the world. I just I find it really I find it really stupid. And the people that do that regularly, like the the dimmy doors of the world, they do it not for any real ideological reason. They do it because it's just it's good for for money and content. Like that's where that's where that comes from. That is, that is the real reason. That's why a lot of people will do it uh, for the algorithmic boost that they get. Or they'll do it because they think that, you know, this is going to, to create a different uh, avenue for themselves. Same goes for people who uh, don't really necessarily care about the, uh, don't really necessarily care about, like, the news of the world and will spend weeks on end while I'm covering... Uh, you know, Palestinian children being absolutely destroyed by Israeli rocket fire that we've paid for with our tax dollars. <sighs> what do those guys cover? They cover drama. They cover like, oh, um, is Ethan and Hassan, uh, is Ethan and Hassan actually, uh, you know, are they done? Are they going to be over? When will they be over? And many people like that. Many people prefer that to actual news coverage because that makes it way more palatable right? There's so many, there are so many people that have done this over the course of the past couple of weeks, like people that don't know anything about Israel or Palestine, people that don't know about the activist groups, people don't know that like it's an apartheid state, people that don't understand it, but they've already made up their minds. Now, 
they've made up their minds without knowing anything about the situation because they can always make up their minds without knowing anything about the situation because they're liberals. They will always regurgitate the same thing that they that the structures are already justifying for them. That's why you can always maintain the the That's why you can always maintain this presence that you're like objective and neutral. The Sam Harris's of the world used to do this all the fucking time and they still kind of do to the to this day. The Jordan B. Petersons of the world used to do this all the time and they still kind of do this to this day, but Jordan Peterson is openly maintained, you know, openly admitted he's come out of the closet uh with with uh, conservatism at this point. But they used to do this all the fucking time. Uh Dave Rubin being like, "Oh, I'm Leaving the left because I'm a real liberal, a classical liberal, the Tim Pools of the world who say, I'm still a liberal, actually, even though I think Trump is going to win every state and then some. And it is, it's done because everyone is a liberal. And when you maintain the, the, uh, the, the, the concept the, the marketing that you are a liberal, you can just kind of rely on the, as many have before, you can kind of rely on the marketing while still pushing like really dangerous and scary and, and right-wing ideals. Operate like a dirty capitalist market. History will show what will work or won't. It's on us to push people to action and not just petty stupid infighting. And the best part is that it's a total myth that by pushing people down the funnel, you will lose an audience. Look at plenty of creators ranging from Second Thought Philosophy to Uber Hassan who dedicate their time to informing, entertaining, and teaching at a relative entry level and yet manage to keep some of the biggest audiences on here without living off of cannibalizing other left adjacent channels they might not the worst people who come out of the israel palestine argument are those who say oh you care about palestinians what about yemen kurds rohingya where were you then and it's like bro we have been talking about it you just weren't fucking listening because you're just cynically listing off a google search to try and dunk on people yes i mean that happens all the time like all of those issues i brought up but people will be like well what about now you know what you're not talking about them now it's like yeah because you know we're currently watching a a ethnic cleansing campaign happen in real time with our, you know, with our dollars. Anyway, I hate that, but I think I despise the people that derail what I'm trying to do because I'm very open about what I want to do. I want people to go on their own journey, right? I want people to go on their own journey. I want people to uh, explore anti-capitalist thought, anti-capitalist sentiment. I want people to read theory, right? And what is very fresh, and I want people to understand that I'm always going to offer uh, historical materialist perspectives on, on why things have happened and why things will continue happening in the way that they do. So in that process, though, I require charitability. And the thing that I fucking dis despise is that the drama farming is, of course, very appealing, very appealing, and it gets a lot of clicks, and it basically muddies the waters. And so many people that just want to to get as much information as possible from a way more palatable uh, way can only keep up with news instead of like dense ass, like going through articles over and over again and like t looking at uh, what activist groups have written uh, and, and uh, their investigations. They just simply want to watch drama unfold in front of their eyes and then feel like they've actually learned something new. And... That, unfortunately, is the most successful way to cover the news. Like, if I do a Ben Shapiro video, if I, if I react to Ben Shapiro talking about Israel-Palestine, that, that video is going to get way more views than, and here, I know this already, because I am, after all, a YouTuber. Okay, let's take a look. Comedian demolishes Piers Morgan Israel-Palestine debate, 131,000 views. This country is a joke, 107,000 views. And then you go down and you get to Ben Shapiro gets owned by a TikTok, 329,000 views because it's way more palatable. It is way more palatable. Stop lying, Ben Shapiro, 320,000 views. But if I have a member of the Knesset, does Israel Palestine have a solution featuring Noah Coleman and Dr. Orfer Kassif? 100,000 views. People don't care. People don't care enough. Like they, they don't want, they don't want the good stuff. They don't want the educational stuff. So I have to like maintain this delicate balance. But I do get very frustrated. So you're saying it's about the money, not the message? What? Here comes the accusations of intellectual corruption. The problem is when you speak in absolutes about theory, truth. So you're saying it's about the money and not the message is chomp and cheddar? I think you completely misunderstood what I was saying. 
unless you're talking about me or someone else. I hate when people say, so you're saying, because it's always, it always turns into something I'm not saying at all. It's just like some dude shadow boxing in the chat. What I'm trying to say is that what I do requires charitability. And I can't get charitability if the most popular footage of my content and my commentary is greatly uh, motivated by someone who's not really interested in, in you know, delivering their own perspective until maybe later down the line, but instead just to, be, just to use any and every opportunity to be like, Hassan fucking sucks, and he's, here's why he's like stupid and bad and wrong all the time, right? And that kind of, that kind of clickbaity shit works really well. It's unfortunate. Not gonna lie, you don't get enough credit for how little you engage with petty leftist drama sphere despite that. Yeah, I don't, I don't care to learn about a lot of that stuff. Relative entry level, and yet managed to keep some of the biggest audiences on here without living off of cannibalizing other left adjacent channels they might not fully agree with. But okay, we, we've spent enough time on these tumors. Disagreements will exist, but the funnel takes precedence. Blah, 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 blah. We should all get along. You got things should run for the Miss World pageant. On is the internet charitability is not a thing, and don't expect that from people who don't like you on a personal level. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't like me on a personal level because one, they've developed a misguided opinion of me because they never really like came in here and saw what I was about and only watch videos of uh, people being like Hassan is stupid and fucking shitty and a monster ranging from people who say like Hassan is bad and stupid to uh, Hassan is genocidal maniac and a terrorist. Right. So um, when you, when that's all you're inundated with, like you're already going to come in here with a negative perspective. Yeah. My older brother doesn't like you because you've made fun of XCC or something. And I think to myself, Oh, so you've never seen a video or, or stream of his. Exactly. And there's a lot of people like that, and and it sucks because it completely destroys what I'm trying to do. What? I just did my sunet. What the fuck? Okay, shut the fuck up, chatter. How can they not like you on a personal level? Next to zero people here know you personally? That's a great question. It's because they don't know anything. They've just been fed a bunch of misinformation. Um, and no one is going to sit here and watch a fucking eight-hour stream to develop their minds. It's much more condensed and much easier to go, he's bad, he's a rich socialist, and he fucking watches React content, and that's bad too. The commentator you just pulled up is an example of the viewer that is looking for drama, not information law. Exactly. So, that kind of sucks. What's really great about your commentary is that you remember articles and studies really well and can bring them into conversation about recent events. Yes. Um... I do try to do that. Unfortunately, I went on Reddit. Someone said something insane about you. When I asked them about it, they said, I'm just repeating what other people have said. I've never watched them. Absolutely insane. Because people want to be a part of a, people want to be a part of a club. And if there's a big fuck Hassan club, like they kind of want to be a part of that. Regardless, uh, the, the thing that I wanted to say is also I've, I've been doing this and this is a, uh, you know, politics is hot button. Everybody gets very passionate about their, their own particular thing. Everyone has like one issue they care about the most. And if I am at a disagreement with that issue, most people don't have the capacity to go, okay, we just disagree with that, but I agree with all the other stuff, so who cares? They go, oh my God, this is the most important thing on the planet, and he just singled me out and said, I'm a fucking idiot for believing this. Now I will hate him forever. Or uh, before I get to that point, I'll say something really stupid in the chat, and he'll just rip me apart and then ban me. So now I hate him forever. And it usually works like that. You know what I mean? It, it's usually, that is, that is how this works. XQC is a piece of shit who uses every opportunity to mention you on a stream and make fun of you, such a shitty person. It's okay. Uh, it, there are a lot of people who do stuff like this, and it doesn't really, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Every single time I've had a conversation uh, with XQC uh, on camera, everybody knows how that goes. You know what I mean? He's never... There has never been a singular moment where XUC and I have been side by side where we've had a conversation where he's come across as like coherent, clear, in the right. It doesn't really matter. Let's continue. Yeah, you'll get it. Originally, I was going to actually show you the creators I would consider the tumor category, but I decided against it out of naivety or hope that they might eventually step out of this role. They might not even be realizing they're playing. We're still on the same side, I, I think. Anyways... Now, let's actually take a peek into the meat of this chunky-ass funnel of ours. 
We all start from somewhere. Our initial trigger to changing our mind can be anything from personal experience to watching a dude we follow get dunked on in a YouTube video. There's no right, no wrong approach, and that's exactly why this section of the funnel is so important, and not to forget, kind of fun. Let's start from the reply guys. Their lore takes us back to the anti-SJW era, a dark and sweaty time which gave birth to many variants of the Ben Shapiro virus. This virus would seemingly attach itself to unsuspecting videos of progressive feminists or 18-year-old college kids saying something only to be completely obliterated by the superior minds of facts and logic. Well, until people started actually questioning those facts and logics, giving birth to left-wing ownage corn, or what we call the reply guys. This can be done in many formats, through long-form essays like those of H. Bomber Guy, Just one small problem! Sell their houses to who, Ben? Fucking Aquaman! Or Classic. Big Joel, or direct analytical dunks like from The Cavernacle. Edgy punches like with bad empanada streams, or just classic humorous annihilation like with Noah Samson or Hakim's famous response videos. These videos feel like cold water being splashed in your face, just instead of waking up from your fever, you're being shown that hey, that the really smart dude you've been basing your whole personality around, yeah, they're, they're kind of bloody stupid. Moving to the second type, probably what I spend most time watching personally, media analysis. It's the people you should blame for the saying that everything is political, which it is, no matter how much we try to forget. Media analysts take our favorite films, books, series, music, or art in general, and show us the underlining ideology of the whole thing. Why we relate so much, or why we hated it. What message- Yeah, Bad Empanada is unironically the best example of the type of person I don't actually- interact with or yell at at all because ultimately like one i don't know the entire breadth of their content but but like that's that's a perfect example like it's it just like i think they're anti-imperialist so whatever i just look away i know that he uh, doesn't like me personally i think he's like done many videos on me as well where he's like uh he reluctantly has to agree that i'm anti-imperialist but ultimately he's just like um, but he's like, fuck that guy because he does like react videos or some shit. He is a little off uh, for sure. Spoken and saying that you're more char charitable to Loner Box and Empanada. Loner hates and shits on you way more. I mean, I talk to Loner Box from time to time. I don't think Loner Box is as big as a uh, Zionist as you guys think he is, especially considering that he's done multiple videos, one with the Palestinian content creator Beast Process, where he literally for an hour talks about how Israel is an apartheid state. So, Bad Empanada, he doesn't hate you. I just remember, he just, he, I remember him being, like, losing his mind over, like, React content. <laughs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of people who's, like, because they're YouTubers, they just, like, their brain breaks. Their brain breaks on, on React content. And they're just, like, that's the worst thing you can ever do. It's, like, actually... You can't be a socialist while doing React content, to which I'm like, okay. Was it trying to put across why some of it is propaganda or why it's, you know, just really bad? But ultimately, I don't do anything. Like, Media I don't, analyst. I don't shit on him or I don't spend any time because, like, why the fuck would I? Why would I? You know what I mean? Why would I do that? Who gives a shit? Get a lot of shit from people further down the funnel for not really doing anything, but how can you say that about some of the greatest propaganda works of our time, like Shrek, a Marxist analysis by John Ascheka, and I kid you not, Azur Scapegoat. Y yes, there are two analyses of Shrek, or, or the greatest takedown of how enemy at the gate lies to you by Kay and Skittles. Shows like Renegade Cut, or uh, the recent gem overanalyzing the Barbie movies with queer Marxist theory by Alexander Ravilla. All the creators on this list are pretty great, and not all of them only focus on media. And while you might call most of this either over-intellectualizing or contrastingly not much more than consumerist obsession over- Okay, first of all, I do media analysis too. Why the fuck am I not on here? I do it in real time as a streamer, okay? I do it in real time as a streamer, and it's about news, uh, like, for the most part. It's not media as in, like, uh, long-form media. I do media analysis and, and instill media literacy all the fucking time. You are on here? No, I'm not in this category. It's art. All I can tell you is... You're a tumor, honey? No, dumbass. He made the worst fucking graph of all time where he says tumors are se separate from the people that are on there on the stream well, category, and he doesn't name them, so it's like causing confusion for people. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. News. Is, well, 
at the news. Arguably a section of the media landscape we lack the most in. The libs are out here performing group fellatio on the Bidens and Macrons of the world, only outpaced by the giant orange man statues erected hard, deep, and long by the conservative eco chamber. It's kind of hard to compete with billion dollar industries, but some are still ready to take this on, pushing through the sludge, getting us informed, and somehow, somehow staying away from the big old Murdoch box. Some of my favorite are the excellent Democracy Now!, PLM yes, or Positive Leftist News run by Mexi. Contrastingly, Good Morning Bad News, mostly over on TikTok, or the ever-entertaining Some More News. I even run a fledgling openly biased news channel with my boys from the Deprogram podcast called First Thought, where we post three times a week and are soon launching our first long-form content. It's not causing infusion. These dicks are calling you a tumor because it gets a reaction out of you. Oh. Anyways, while the new section of the funnel won't always directly push someone down, it plays a critical role in fighting against right-wing advancement into the mainstream and hopefully introduces most viewers to critically viewing establishment billionaire-owned media mouthpieces. Their own personal bias and agenda control 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 exactly what people think. think. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our, our democracy. democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. So, the introduction funnel is there to Tickle the curiosity by killing your idols, connecting to you through media and art, or yes, by I giving am. I'm you on a the new perspective category. of current events. Guys, lighting. Guys, you got nigga is not going to fucking shit on me. What is wrong with all of you? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I, like we are like-minded individuals who also have a tendency for flashy uh, luxury goods. I've been on their podcast. What are you talking about? I hype them up all the time. Some of you guys are kind of silly. I guess I get it because you think like everyone that makes content that mentions me by name is probably fucking attacking me in some regard, but that's not what's going on. My PFP is in the new section as well. The fire is half the work. The big boy, the fat of the funnel, the fat of our lives, entertainment. Get radicalized in the toilet seat, at work, during break, at school, while driving, while drinking, before sleep, or right when you wake up. The opiate of the masses is no longer religion, or even opiates themselves. It's 24-7 non-stop warfare for your screen time. How then, in the nine hells, do you expect any self-respecting movement to not utilize that? Entertaining people and helping them forget about their worries, if only for a moment, are relatively noble goals by I themselves. But add an extra ingredient to that concoction, and you get the goddamn powder puff girls of ideology. Political entertainers stem from the early days of late night talk shows combining comedy, news, and hot takes, which themselves stem from thousands of years of deeply politicized written, spoken, and performed entertainment. In our era, this field has transformed into a whole mega industry of podcasters, streamers, comedians, and just general people looking to give you a good time. Well, maybe, hopefully, teaching you something along the way. To start off with streamers, they give arguably the biggest bang for your buck of any video entertaining category I can think of. Some of these people spend between 5 and 10 hours a day every day pretty much living with their chat. They react to others' content, world events, shoot the shit, react to what chat sends them, or analyze this or that subject. Because so much time is invested by viewers who consume this sort of content, there is an inexplicable bond built between the host and the audience. You hear that THC carts are killing people. You hear that mattresses are killing people? This bond leads to far deeper trust than with most other formats of entertainment or content in general. And this trust, which translates into quite real and literal power, can be used to direct, often unexperienced people towards a more factual and kinder way of looking at the world. In an era plagued by rampant antisocial tendencies, people, especially the young'uns, are looking for role models outside of their homes, but now also schools and friend groups. That's where streamers who treat their role responsibly come into play. From the likes of Hassan, who's basically a one-man Gen Z leftist CNN at this point, or the many different stripes of leftists from Mike from PA, the Serfs, Central Committee, No Justice MTG, Rob Ross at TRRS, by often unwillingly playing the role of either role model or main source of the correct takes, streamers, when not embracing the tumor path, will continue to grow into some of the most influential people of our era. Like it or not. Next on, we have the jokers. They either tell us we live in a society or make us laugh. They make up the meat of the meat, the largest chunk of the entertainment funnel. Some of them you call comedians, others video essayists and commentators. I cut them into two subtypes. Edgelord internet humor, the likes of Wow Mao, who apparently, yes, is an actual leftist. Juche Co-op Gang, a very tall Bart. Aim on animation, which still haunts me in my dreams to this day. But then, pretty much You missed yourself, the streamer section? Uh, yeah. 
I mean, I don't want to know. We politicized, written, up. spoken, and performed podcaster, street fully. Really the biggest bang for your buck of any video entertaining category I can think of. Some oh, you said biggest bang for your buck? Five 10 hours a day, every day, pretty much living with their chat. They react to others' content, world events, shoot the shit, react to what chat sends them, or analyze this or that subject. Because so much time is invested by viewers who consume this sort of content, there is an inexplicable bond built between the host and the audience. You hear that THC carts are killing people. You hear that mattresses are killing people? This bond leads to far deeper trust than with most other formats of entertainment or content in general. And this trust, which translates into quite real and literal power, can be used to direct, often unexperienced people towards a more factual and kinder way of looking at the world. In an era plagued by rampant antisocial tendencies, people, especially the youngins, are looking for role models outside of their homes, but now also schools and friend groups. That's where streamers who treat their role responsibly come into play. From the likes of Hassan, who's basically a one-man Gen Z leftist CNN at this point, or the many different stripes of leftists from Mike from PA, the Serfs, Central Committee, No Justice MTG, Rob <laughs> Russet, TRR. Mike from PA, Central Committee, what the fuck? Double mention. Yes. By often unwillingly playing the role of either role model or main source of the correct takes, streamers, when not embracing the tumor path, will continue to grow into some of the most influential people of our era. Like it or not. Next on, we have the Jokers. They either tell us we live in a society or make us laugh. They make up the meat of the meat, the largest chunk yeah, of the impact in my okay. dreams, the OG who... And pretty much that things just become like land creatures. And the OG who was here before it was even a thing, Batko, and many, many other edgelords. The and the second subtype, the long-form Jokers. Botko is the one who made that intro that I used to use all the time. The... Dun, 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 the... The anarchist intro, uh, you don't hate Blue Mondays, which he had to delete, I think, for some reason or another. Jokers who make pretty much everything from essays to short documentaries, like one of my personal favorites, the two insane boyfriends over at Boy Boy, the brilliant Mia Mulder, spooky scary socialist with his whole two videos, Sean the Talking Skull, Mune Cat, who, by the way, almost drinks as much as me, which is very comforting, to say the least. Anyways, a recent rising star, GDF, Philosophy GDF is Q, the go. Balkan Odyssey, and many, many others. By phrasing their content as more generally educational, historical, or as cultural analysis or whatever not-so-scary term, they managed to pique the interest of people just browsing the web looking for a good laugh or to satisfy their curiosity on this topic or another. They're the shit YouTube will actually recommend, the shit that changes your worldview without you even noticing it. King content, baby. King content. Now, next. Podcasters. I mean, do I have to say anything here? It's it's podcasts. Radio Kill the TV Star. If you're going to spend your time listening to something while you're driving, cooking, working out, pushing out those dark thoughts of cosmic insignificance as you fantasize of the warm embrace of non-existence, wrapping you in its arms after the excruciating experience of being given life without having ever asked for it, or cleaning, redecorating, or gaming, podcasts are a constant. I have personally learned a lot from incredible shows like Chapo Trap House for the humor and interesting takes on theory, True Anon to grow my hatred of pedo-capitalism, Revolutionary Left Radio and Guerrilla History Pod for my praxis in history, or Blowback for their incredible storytelling. Oh, also a little podcast called The Program that yours truly runs with Hakim and Second Thought, link below. But yeah, contrary to the news sphere, the left has managed to find its place in this medium with some of the most grassroots financially backed pods <laughs> out there being the very ones which are working towards the good old cause. The entertainer step of the funnel, in general, is pretty exclusive to the internet. Grassroots organization is too busy feeding and housing people to also give them a laugh. It's also the perfect stepping stone one can take, because let's be honest, it's mostly not that heavy. None of us can bear to sit through books and documentaries and heavy-handed videos all the time, especially when we're not really that involved with a thing in the first place, which people at this stage of the funnel really aren't. And that's exactly what our darling entertainers manage to do. Bridge that gap between a slight interest and real passion by totally normalizing a school of thought that should have been the standard in the first place. The right might have war movies, billionaire funding, and countless grifters, but they will always be, well, boring. You've opened up your mind to it. All those years of indoctrination have finally been flushed out along with your daily intake of cigarettes and vodka. You've had an ideological enema and are now finally ready to learn. So, just like in IRL, there's nothing you can't do without the right hype man.
This section of the funnel, as I've just said, is there to actually show you why the current status quo really isn't doing it for you. Something happened in your life, or you spent enough time around leftist ideas, and it triggered your need to learn more. But it's not like you'll actually sit through difficult to understand theory and ideas, and you're still skeptical of the concept that there might be actual alternatives to the current system. It's not that bad, you know? And that's exactly where these hype man channels come into play. I feel like this video is just going to end up as fear fuel monger for the right. No, but this is like something that I openly have talked about on ironically the deprogram podcast, which is that like I I like tailoring my message to the audience that I assume is listening specifically because like I want to lead them on their own personal journey of, of discovery of leftist ideals. And a lot of people use that as a gotcha to be like Hassan is actually secretly a tanky and like wants to kill every capitalist or whatever. And that's why he's saying these sorts of things. And it's like, first of all, it's not a fucking secret. Like I openly said it myself and I've said it time and time again. And secondly, like, no, I don't want people to get fucking murdered. I, I, the, the entire worldview that I have revolves around trying to make it easier for others to coexist. So it's very, it's very stupid, but you know, I, I do think that, I do think that people will use this video in that regard as well. So who cares? Fuck them. They, I've seen people say you're pretending to be left a grifter because you stay so light. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Those people, half of those people, including some of the fucking worst goddamn grifters in this, in this sector have come from this community. Okay. I've been doing this for. I've been doing this for far longer than I've been serving top of the hour ad breaks. Okay. I've been doing this for fucking what? Four years now. Right. Almost five, actually, as a matter of fact, it's about to be fucking five years that I've been doing this. Um, and, and obviously almost 10 before then at the young Turks, but five on my own or full time on my own for three, but five on Twitch. So, Oh, here's the three minute ad break now. Uh, so of course, a lot of people have come and left. Uh, in that process, a lot of people have come and gone in that time frame. Some have become uh, uh, ideological enemies. Some have become ma major five plus on Twitch, bro. What are you on? It's been five years this year. Yes, I technically started in 2018. That uh, you're right. So it has been five years. It's almost about to be six years. But I started. Uh, I went full time in 2020, in the beginning of 2020. You have created super villains by exposing them in the chat and then yelling at them while we keg W. I know. Anyway, let's while on the surface, having been cut into different categories, really only have one role. Touch on particular people's particular... You want to know why I popped off? Not because of the 2020 election. I'll tell you why I popped off. I was thinking about this this morning. I was thinking about it because of everything that I've said about Ukraine. Not like the, oh, Russia won't invade, which I obviously recognize was wrong. And not because of COVID either. COVID was there. COVID was there, but there were other fucking content creators online as well. Why didn't they experience the same thing? I'm going to tell you why. Okay. It was obviously a combination of COVID. It was a combination of the election cycle. But you want to know what it was? It wasn't just the January 6th coverage. No. No. It was also the fact that well, the George Floyd protests were happening all around the country and then all around the world. There was a fucking quirked up white boy who had been defending Black Lives Matter for, at that point, far before anyone else had ever even learned about it or learned about it and defended it. While everybody was fucking pulling a defund the police is bad on Black Lives Matter under the Barack Obama administration, I was fucking advocating for the same shit and getting yelled at by liberals in the exact same capacity that liberals still yell at me okay and time passed and donald trump became anti-black lives matter and then liberals also came to that conclusion that black lives matter may be good okay there's a reason why when something pops off in real time i can conduct analysis that is uh on the money like in real time, and you go, well, I, I don't understand. How did this happen? Like, how, how can I do that? It's because I've been saying the exact same shit for 10 fucking years on the exact same issues because, unfortunately, nothing changes. Nothing gets better. But that's what it is. So, yes, 
in in 2020, when uh, the Black Lives Matter protests were happening, people were, I, I think, like, shocked to find a daily streamer who, who you know, knew what the, the positions were all about. Because at that point, I had been advocating for Black Lives Matter since 2015, since Ferguson. At a time when I was critical of Barack Obama for shitting on Black Lives Matter. This is something that a lot of people have forgotten. A lot of liberals love having amnesia on shit like this, okay? There was a time, there was a time, there was a time when, like I said, liberals, including the Pod Johns, were very critical of Black Lives Matter. They were like shitting on BLM for making the Democrats look bad. Just like right now, just like right now, there are still liberals who are shitting on others who say, I don't know if I want to vote for Joe Biden if he keeps pushing genocide. And their response to that is always, well, Trump is going to be worse at genocide. He'll be extra genocidal. And it's like, that's not the point. You have to extract concessions out of your leaders, especially when it's, I would say, a red line, like a moral red line to draw on the sand. Why the fuck wouldn't you do that? That's politics. Stop yelling at those who are demanding an end to this endless bloodshed and start dialing, baby. Start calling your fucking congresspersons. Make a big stink. Libtars need to get their shit in order. Pain points and explain why, very truthfully, they're directly or indirectly systematic and therefore fixable. How capitalism hurts you is somewhat of my channel's specialty, focusing on how you're screwed over financially, emotionally, and spiritually. Wait, are you sure you're streaming 24-7 straight for like two years wasn't the biggest catalyst? I think that was that played a big role in it too. Spirit and soul. How your boss twists modesty on you as some sort of virtue while siphoning almost all the money you generate for himself. How your inability to find true community or love is stifled by the ever-growing commodification of all relationships, including the family. How dreams which would have been considered modest in the middle of the last century are now borderline impossible for you to achieve, and so on and so on and so on. Channels like my dear friend JT over at Second Thought, who introduces his viewers to a more material understanding of how things really work in capitalism through the brilliantly written and produced video Videos. One dime's crazy insight into the economy ideology in the future. Unlearning economics is unlearning of economics. Niche but incredibly important topics like the ones covered by the likes of Catherine or Andrewism. History deep dives by Freda, History Civilis, or the brilliantly passionate Lady Izdihar. How we're impacting our very own planet, explained by channels like Our Changing Climate, as well as fantastic anti fascist cultural and social commentators like FD Signifier, Best D. Marx, Luna Oi, uh, Cock Philosophy, Non Compete, or John the Duncan, and many, 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 many others. The hype men are the breaking point, the closest to an actual PR team of the online left pipeline. They're supposed to be direct, honest, clear, and if possible, just a little bit entertaining. This is where the marketing of ideas kind of stops. For the only people moving to the next step are those looking for solutions of the problems defined and explained in this section of the funnel. People who finally understand this shit makes no sense and ask the scariest question. What is to be done? This whole class is gonna feel my wrath. Now, D nice. Do you mean Denise? Son of a bitch. The teachers represent the free online universities of modern ideological education. Just like professors in any college I can think of, most of them often disagree among themselves in most key issues. But with the students coming from all walks of life and incredibly eclectic material conditions, it's this very diversity of teachers the online left has that can be its strength. The teachers outline the many schools of thought of our relatively young tradition from the Marxists to the Kropotkins and the Luxembourgs and Lenins. They go in depth about how the current system functions, how it informs history, what had predated it, what alternatives to it exist, how they may be brought about, what the relationship is between man and labor, man and the material world, man and purpose. By teaching, they are fulfilling the very ideals set out to them by the oldest minds of these philosophies, changing the world. Their job is to give the tools needed to generations of self-conscious individuals, to build not only progressive minds who believe, but hands which act. Together with the obviously far more important uh, knowledge one gains from actual IRL organizing, these teachers, just like a mama bird, help true through the heavy, often boring, long, and insanely complicated history and philosophy and carefully drop it into all of our hungry, angry mouths. Sp
spit that pure ideology into my mouth, mommy. Am I right? Oh, Jesus, why did I keep this in the script? Where was it? Yeah, the, the teachers. Uh, their job never really ends, even if they get someone to move on from the funnel, because as they say, the more you know, the more you know, you know nothing. And so... Who are they? Well, some of my favorite and most impactful channels of this finishing line of ours are people like my dear brother Hakim, who somehow takes the Alexandrian library he has in his head and gives us what we need to know. Theory channels like Marxism Today, The Marxist Project, Pro Cult, Epoch Philosophy, Zoe Baker for The Anarchist, or The Finnish Bolshevik for The MLs, Jonas Jacob from Kak Philosophy for those in between, and probably plenty others. Hell, I'll probably get into so much trouble for even putting them all on one list, but that's Papa Yugopnik's burden to bear. I might like some of my kids more than the others, but I'll never, ever. That's weird. I feel like this dis dismisses the tremendous job you do. What are you talking about? He's not only my friend, but also glazed me the fuck up like multiple times, more than most, more than his own co-hosts. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tell them. The teachers are here to help learn and wave as the new generations of terminally online humanoids slowly creep out to touch the grass. No matter how much shit they get or we get, I've always loved this little nook of the internet. At the end of the day, cut to its most basic truth, it's a bunch of people who wanted to find a way to escape the daily grind of the very system they know and hate, while at the same time doing their part to push for an alternative to that very same system. They saved themselves from the proletarian grind, but didn't forget their roots. It's not just content for the sake of content, at least not most of the time. And if they trick the market into putting bread on their table while they shit talk it, then, and I might be subjective here, they might have just found one of the last cheat codes to this massive- 100%. Um, that's why, that's also part of the reason why, he didn't put me in two categories, he put me in three. But that's also the reason why I like cover petty shit too. Like, I, obviously- when I said I don't cover, like, leftist drama, that doesn't mean I don't cover drama. Of course I cover drama. Drama that is not, like, inherently leftist, I cover from a leftist perspective all the time. Why? Because people also want, you know, people want to eat chips sometimes. On the side. They want to have some treats. So, yes, there's definitely a lot of the fun shit that I engage in. Uh, that's part of the reason why I, you know, play video games. It's part of the reason why I do react content. Like, that's it. That's, what's going on? Why are you getting up? Up, little lady. Someone's bored. Yeah. And also, that's why I collaborate or used to collaborate more, I think, with other content creators. Because, like, you know, it's good to to tap into their audiences as well. Well, one, because I enjoy collaborating with other content creators and my friends, but also because it's like good to, good to, to reach a new audience in a positive way. Obviously, uh, many of the larger content creators that I no longer am like, um, super friendly with have, uh, have, have shut off said cross pollination and have actually, as a matter of fact, used me as a cudgel to, consistently remind people like it's a fucking parachute cord that like Hassan is bad remember guys no matter how much you yell at me for whatever moral failing that I've demonstrated over and over again remember how bad Hassan is because he makes you feel bad because he's a fucking disgusting commie and he believes that you know trans people are people or uh that uh you know He's uh, anti-capitalist despite having a house. Capitalists will sell us the rope we will hang them with. This is a great quote for the reason it's gaining from the system while advocating... ...really unfair yes. game we've all been thrust into without our consent. If we put the infighting to the minimum, concentrate on the goal, and do our small but significant parts, Be both these creators and the incredible you? communities they're building could have a real impact. I don't know. Or maybe this is just all a big useless circle jerk. But then again... You did just finish the video. Thank you for watching. Now, be a good tavarish and smash that subscribe button if you liked what. Alright, this is a good video.